So this morning we're looking at the heart of Christmas. The season is upon us. We can see it everywhere. We can see it when we walk down the street. There's beautiful decorations everywhere. We can hear it in the supermarkets when we're doing our shopping. We've probably been able to hear it for a little while, actually. They like to bring the carols out a little earlier each year, it seems. But it's wonderful to be with you here, with, here with you this morning, and we're, get, we're bringing you a new sermon series. It's just a short series, and it's introducing the four main themes um, that are at the very heart of Christmas. So this holiday season, obviously, we get distracted by things like the tinsel, the trees, the treats, all those things, but it distract us, distracts us from uh, what really matters, doesn't it? What is Christmas really all about? It's either focus... Um, the cold, sorry, I need to slow down. I think I'm rushing. <laughs> it's been a hectic morning. <laughs> Each year, the focus is on the gifts under the tree. It's on the meals around the table. It's on the family spending time together. It's on hopes for hot summer days. And they've been a bit few and far between, but we'll see how we go from now on. It's lovely to have the warmth. These things all certainly play a part in the season, but there's something else at the heart of the Christmas season, isn't there? The Bible tells us the real reason to celebrate is the saving grace offered to us through the birth, life and death of God's Son, Jesus. The Heart of Christmas series that we're bringing to you centres on the story of Jesus' birth, from the prophetic promise of His coming to His miraculous arrival. The Heart of Christmas covers the themes of hope, peace, joy and love. And they're designed to help you get um, prepared for Christmas and the real reason for the season. This morning we will, we will discover the hope that comes to us through the birth of Christ Jesus and the hope that it brings. I'm sure that we could all use a little hope. We can learn a lot about hope through the way that children embrace the holiday season. Nothing says hope like watching a child write down their Christmas wish list. I heard a story the other day about a young boy. He was about five years old. He was writing his Christmas wish list and he had a very odd item on his list. He wrote down that he wanted a banana. Who knows why? Children choose funny things for funny reasons. His parents were puzzled. And he said to them, I can ask for anything, can't I? And they smiled and nodded their heads and said yes. For days leading up to Christmas, the boy mentioned to his parents over and over again how excited he was that Santa would be bringing him a banana. Sure enough, on Christmas morning, there was a box under the tree containing the fruit from his list. From the very moment he wrote it down, he had an unwavering hope that it would come to pass. The true reason there is hope at the heart of Christmas is not because of the gifts, but because of the birth of Jesus Christ. His arrival on earth was the fulfilment of a prophecy spoken hundreds of years ago. The prophecy is actually one of the most well-known scriptures that is repeated during the Christmas time. Isaiah 9, two to seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of dark, deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. The re they rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramp warrior in battle and every garment rolled in blood we will burned as will be burned as fuel for the fire for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace the prophet Isaiah writes one of the most classic Old Testament prophecies about the coming of the birth of Christ. The passage that he writes is a result of very dark times. The world had felt the full weight of sin. It had wreaked havoc on all of creation. 
What Isaiah offers in chapter 9 was something the Jewish people really needed. They needed hope. Hope that one day someone would come and make everything right and restore what had been broken. The birth of Jesus was the fulfilment of that hope and the incredible event offers hope for us even today. The backdrop of Isaiah's writings is around 740 BC was poor leadership. The people of Israel had been suffering through the reigns of four ungodly kings, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah. They were corrupt and they led the people away from God and it was a really dark time. Isaiah wrote these words knowing God would have to intervene and bring Israel back to itself, himself. The kingdom was crumbling, the people needed hope. This passage makes two major statements. The first is an acknowledgement of the brokenness and darkness that surrounded Israel due to the sin and the corruption. The second is the hope of a dawning light through the birth of a child who would one day make all things right. The Jewish people needed these words in the Old Testament to remind them that God had not forgotten them. The book of Matthew also reminds us of Isaiah's writings. The gospel writer was making a connection between what Isaiah had prophetically written and what had taken place in the manger in Bethlehem. Matthew 1, 22 to 23 says, All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they should call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So a young Jewish man, Joseph, had a very difficult decision to make. He was engaged to a woman named Mary, but she was already pregnant. Joseph decided he would probably want to call the wedding off due to the fact that it looked like his wife-to-be had been unfaithful. But an angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. He told him to go forward with the marriage because the child in her womb was from the Holy Spirit. All of these events took place to fulfil the prophecy from the Old Testament, which claimed that there would be a child born as a light in the darkness for hope for all the people. The child would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. The presence of darkness threatens our hope, and the centre of Christmas story is focused squarely on the birth of Jesus. He is the fulfilment of the Israelites' hope that God would push back the darkness and shine a bright light into their troubled world. One of the reasons Christmas resonates in our hearts is because we too live in a world that is like Israel. Our world world is dark and it's corrupt and sin so easily entangles us. There is war, disease, conflict and oppression all around us. We too are in need of the Christ child to usher in the light and push back the darkness. Christmas is a reminder that whatever it is we hope for in our lives, whether it's healing, restoration, forgiveness or a fresh start, it is available to us through God. Hope is not a result of the absence of conflict, difficulty, struggle or trial. Hope is a result of the presence of God. God's presence has come to us to give us hope. The hard part about hope is that it often takes longer than we would like to see it be fulfilled. Like the Jewish people experienced, hope requires patience. There is a plant in the southwest desert of the United States called an agave americana. It's also known as a century plant and it grows on rocky, dry, mountainous areas. This plant can reach 12 feet in diameter and grows up to six feet tall. One of its most unusual traits is is its reproductive cycle because for 20 to 30 years, this plant remains the same height and puts out no flowers. But suddenly and without warning, a new bud will sprout, resembling a tree trunk size asparagus spear It will rise into the sky at a rate of seven inches a day until it reaches the height of 20 to 40 feet. Then it culminates in a crown of several clumps of yellow blossoms and blooms for three weeks. 
similar to the century plant, some of the great answers to our hoping and longing take time and patience in order to see the beauty unfold. Isaiah saw that one day in the future, God would bring a great light and salvation through the birth of a child. It was not until hundreds of years later that Matthew recorded Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Jesus is the very presence of God on earth. He offers forgiveness of sin, destruction of evil, and the promise of eternal life. So why do we read the prophecy during Christmas time? It is because the faithfulness of God in the past gives us deep abiding hope in the present and unwavering trust for the future. The Apostle Paul made an appeal for hope to those who trust in Christ as he wrote a letter to the early church in Rome. In Romans 15, 4. For whatever has written, whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Paul said everything that had been written in the past, all of the prophecy and fulfilment, is meant to teach us how to hold on to the God who will answer our prayers. What has been written gives us endurance and encouragement so that we might have hope. It is important to revisit the prophecies of the Old Testament and the fulfilment that comes through the birth of of Jesus because it reminds us of God who can be trusted to come through to us in our greatest time of need. So what gives us hope? What is it that gives you hope? What is hope to you? Hope to me is an expectation and trust. It is finding that line between believing that God will fulfil my hope and the challenge of trusting that if my hope does not come to pass, that God has a much better plan in his life for me. The birth of Jesus was something that that was promised that actually did come to pass. All these years later, I can trust that Jesus is still working today and that gives me hope. No matter what I'm facing in my life right now, anything is possible through the birth, life and death of Jesus. There was a family who decided to start a new tradition in their house. They placed a jar in their kitchen with a small piece of paper and a pen. Every time something good or bad happened in their house, they would write it down on the piece of paper, put it in their little jar. So by the time Christmas came around, the jar was full. So they sat together, got the jar out, and one by one they took it in turns to take little pieces of paper out of the jar, unfold them and read them together. They laughed together and they cried together, but they were able to sit there and realise how they had been carried through the year. They had survived the struggles. They found joy in the happy times. This act gave them hope that the year ahead could bring an excitement that they might be blessed when they read the jar that they had filled at next year's Christmas. Taking the time to consider the way God had been faithful in the past will give you hope for the present and for the future. The heart of Christmas is hope. Though there are many distractions during the Christmas season, this message is a reminder that hope is offered to us through through Jesus' arrival in the manger. Let's read you a little story about a young woman named Jane who was struggling with her first Christmas apart from her husband. Ever since they were married, they spent the holidays together, but this year he needed to be away for important work and wasn't sure when he would be back. Several days before Christmas, she felt terribly alone and thought to herself, thought to herself, Christmas isn't going to be the same, so she decided that she wouldn't decorate. Late that afternoon, the doorbell rang and there was a delivery boy with a box. He said, hello, are you Jane? Would you sign here, please? She invited him in to step inside and close the door away from the cold. Jane signed the paper and said, what's in the box? The young man laughed and opened up the flap and inside was a golden Labrador retriever puppy. The delivery boy picked up the squirming pup and explained, this is for you. He's six weeks old and completely housebroken. The young puppy began to wiggle in happiness. Who sent this? Jane asked. 
The young man set the animal down and handed her an envelope and said, it's all explained here in this envelope. The dog was bought while its mother was still pregnant. It was meant to be a Christmas gift for you. The young man then handed Jane a book, How to Care for Your Labrador Retriever. <laughs> in desperation, she again asked, who sent me this puppy? As the young man turned to leave, he said, your husband, Merry Christmas. She opened up the letter from her husband. He had written it before he left for work and sent it to the kennel owners to be delivered with the puppy, knowing how lonely his wife would be feeling. The letter was full of love and encouragement to be strong. He had sent her this young animal to keep her, to keep her company until it, that they could be together again. Jane wiped away the tears, put the letter down and then remembered the puppy at her feet. Jane picked up the golden furry ball and held it to her neck. Then she looked out the window at the lights outlining the neighbour's house. She heard from the radio in the kitchen next door the sounds of joy to the world. The Lord has come. Suddenly, Jane felt the most amazing sensation. It was a feeling of hope washing over her. Her heart felt a joy and a wonder greater than the grief and loneliness. Little fella, she said to the dog, it's just you and me. But you know what? There's a box down in the basement I bet you'd like. It's got a little Christmas tree in it and some decorations and lights that are going to impress you. And there's a major scene down there too. Let's go get it. <laughs> Our God is always here and he always knows what we need. He can be trusted to reveal the light of Christmas in order to push back the darkness in our lives. In a land that is full of darkness, there is a light that is dawning. This morning I'm going to um, create, we're going to create a time where if there's something that God has placed on your heart that's weighing heavy on your heart, I'm going to give you a bit of time to speak to him, talk to him about it, focus on handing those things over to him. We've had a lovely worship time this morning during music and that was, that, was, that was really wonderful and I'm sure that many of us really needed that this morning. So I'd like to continue that and um, I'm going to start a short prayer and then I'll give you about a minute just to have a, a chat to God about anything that's weighing heavy on your heart um, and then I'll close with a prayer. God, we come to you this morning in need of hope. Hope that you are faithful and have provided all we need by sending your son to us. We ask that the light of his life would shine into our lives and lift our heads. We offer to you the areas of our lives where we need your presence. Just take a moment to speak with God privately. Lord, we trust you today. We trust that we can come to you and you will push back the darkness and reveal the light and reveal the hope. We look forward to seeing the results of our prayer and the way that you're going to enrich our lives again. 
Thank you, Lord, for showing us that hope is in the heart of Christmas. Praise you, Lord. Amen. So I just want to encourage you as you go through this week, just think about what gives you hope. Um, If you meet somebody who has lost hope, maybe you want to share a little story with them that might make them smile or give them a little bit of hope or help them think a little bit differently about their situation. We know for a fact that there is hope and trust in our God. Amen.